Hey everybody, Kai Waza with you. Welcome back to my channel. And uh, today, just a little chat, little chat and a little uh, small record haul that I did at Sally Ann's today. Sally Ann being Salvation Army. It's Monday, the beginning of my days off. I don't work again until Friday, so nice. Um, Today, I've just realized I have a doctor's appointment next week, and I, which means I have to do blood work this week. So I thought, okay, let me not have anything to eat later last night and uh, just have plain coffee this morning, and I'll go and get my blood work done if they are open, which I made sure because it is the day after Easter or Resurrection Sunday, depending on what you're calling it. <laughs> By the way, I mentioned this in my last video, this whole Resurrection Sunday thing I, being, is that a new thing? People calling it Resurrection Sunday, very um, particular groups or whatever in the Christian community calling it um, Resurrection Sunday rather than Easter, kind of going away from the Easter name. Because um, that's new to me. I mean, I've just heard that the past couple of years. I knew people were, you know, there's always certain denominations or particular Christian groups like shunning or going away from Halloween and doing like whatever. There's no alternative name for that at this point. I don't know, Autumn Harvest Celebration or something. But um, yeah, I mentioned it to, uh, I talked about it over the weekend. I was at work and one of my coworkers, if anybody ever heard of it, um, referred that way and and she was brought up in some kind of a very um religious community i don't know exactly it wasn't like a jehovah witness or seventh day adventist but it was some sort of tight-knit christian type community and um she said yes they absolutely called it resurrection sunday all the time um they were very discouraged from calling it easter um so yeah, I found somebody who's heard of it, <laughs> who grew up with it. I never was aware of that thing. Anyway, uh, today, Monday, so I decided to get my blood work done this morning. I went down to uh, the place and uh, had my blood work done. I don't know how it's going to be because I don't think I've been the best boy in terms of my diabetic diet lately. I have gotten off the wagon there a few times so I'm not exactly sure how this uh, blood work will be but we shall see I usually get the results back in a day or two before I go to see the doctor so I know whether I'm going to be scolded or <laughs> whatever uh, <clears throat> what are you going to do really uh, after that <clears throat> after that I said well I'm going to have breakfast and if you're gonna blow your diabetic diet, uh, the best time to do it is right after blood work, right? <laughs> you have like so many months to make it up. So I went to this new place I hadn't tried that's downtown that I was aware of called Paris Baguette. And it was lovely, very, very lovely. It's in like an office building. Um, <clears throat> I almost didn't go because uh, I got there and it was very crowded. There were a lot of people around it. And I'm like, oh, I sort of hate that crowdedness or whatever. But I decided I did want to try it. So I went in. Uh, I should. I was going to do some pictures and take some film or whatever. But uh, it's like super... Uh, it was crowded. So... Is it my glasses or this thing that's not focusing on me? Um, anyway, yeah, I uh, went in. I didn't take a video because it was just kind of crowded. Pictures or a video it was kind of crowded in there. It's a smallish place. It was beautiful. Oh, my gosh. The stuff is absolutely gorgeous. And they had gorgeous displays of both. They had both sweet, you know, and savory things, which is nice. Um so I got, I had, uh, I have a picture of it I can insert. Uh, I had a, a 
broccoli and cheese thing and I had a some kind of bratwurst sausage in a croissant type wrap with some kind of delicious sauce in it baked in it and then I had a some kind of a bready thing with a bunch of cream in it that was super good <laughs> and just some plain iced tea but it's kind of reasonably priced I mean it's a little bit expensive but it's a very shishi place and that was super nice super loved it very delicious would definitely definitely go again and after that I walked through Chinatown I was going to Salvation Army out in Ivole so I was just going to kind of walk through Chinatown to get there it's not super it's not that far um and I picked up some a little bit of fruit and vegetables. I have pasta and I have sauce. I'm trying not, I don't, I have a small refrigerator here, so I don't buy like tons of food in advance, but uh, I know I have stuff to do some pasta and some nice sun dried tomato pesto sauce, but I don't really have anything to go in the vegetables or something to go in the pasta with it. So I picked up some Chinese cabbage stuff. And I got a couple oranges. Chinatown's a good place to go vegetable shopping, uh, fruit vegetable shopping. It's much cheaper than the regular grocery stores here. And it's fun. I mean, I love Chinatown. Um, so I just picked up, a, you know, a couple things because I didn't want to carry much. And I went down to Sally Ann's Salvation Army. I haven't been there in a while. And uh, their records last time I was there went way up to $3.99, which is ridiculous for thrift store record. I mean, that is ridiculous. And so um, the last time I was there, I had a bunch, several picked out. And I just thought I'd try and ask and see, because I wasn't going to get, for $3.99, I was not going to get any of them. But I thought, let me just take a bunch that I'm interested in up to the register and see if they give you some kind of discount or whatever. And she did. I don't remember what it was, but it was enough that I was like, oh, yeah, OK, so I'll get these. I got, you know, seven or eight or something there the last time. But I haven't been back in a long time. Um, I went there today. I looked. I didn't say anything else. It's just nice to get out of the house. That's what I do. Thrift shopping. I like it. Yeah, there wasn't really anything else there. Um, but there were like eight or nine records that I'm like, oh. If I get a deal on these for three ninety nine, there's not one that I would get. But you know, if I get a deal, I will. So I took them up to the register. I had like eight or nine, and I asked if there was any deal, quantity deal or something. Uh, and she was like, "Well, I can give you one free, but the rest are going to be the regular price, one ninety nine." That's what she said. I supposed to their three ninety nine, and that's what I was quoted before. Which is a ridiculous price, so I thought, well, one ninety nine is completely reasonable. That's what they should be in a thrift store. No more than that, really. They shouldn't be, <laughs> and uh, especially these are not even like in great condition or anything. A lot of these are tore up, you know. Um, but I wasn't going to correct her. I'm going to be like, no, they're supposed to be three ninety nine. You tell me they're one ninety nine. You're going to give me one free? Yeah, I'll take it. So I got them. Chuck Cabot, just a dance, dance band record imitation, Mario Lund's uh, budget label. Like my uh, alien socks. <laughs> Sid Al Sil Austin, a saxophonist. Sing along with the idlers. Best of Gilbert and Sullivan. Kind of a cute cartoon cover on this budget label record. The 100 and string, the 110 string orchestra as opposed to 101 strings. This was interesting. And I have the RCA, I think it's RCA, uh, Ames Brothers Christmas record. I think that's fairly well known, but I've never even seen this one. I didn't know they did one earlier. The Ames Brothers. The Sounds of uh, Christmas Harmony. Who knew? Didn't know. <clears throat> well, I had to get this one. This is kind of weird. And it has some sort of a hole eaten through the record. <laughs> but it's uh, a festive occasion just for you. 
Graham Kerr, the Galloping Gourmet. You remember him? One side is just music, and then the other side is him, like, reading poems and food-related stories with music. So I had to pick that one up. And then this one, like, what is this? I haven't done a needle drop, drop on it. I'm very curious. Original show recording. The Mr. Blackwell Show. You know this guy, like, Blackwell's best dressed list i think he did a worst dress list too didn't he this is some sort of a musical show done about him i don't know like very curious uh, <laughs> you know and I proceeded to wait on the bus home, which is very unpleasant. I don't like to walk. That area of town, not Chinatown, but Evil A, just past Chinatown, uh, where the Salvation Army is. Oh, it's bad. You know, we, we I, I know you don't see this from, or you don't really see it if you're in Waikiki that much, because Waikiki's pretty much cleaned up, but not 100%, but pretty much. You go outside the other parts of town, especially down like Evil A, that part of town. Well, all over town, but down there, especially really bad homeless situations. It's really, really bad. And uh, there are people occupying, you know, the entire sidewalks. Dozens of people down there. I mean, streets in that area, you can't even walk on the sidewalk at all. You have to walk in the street because it's so... There are just the homeless encampments that are constructing things on the sidewalks, literally. And... It's insanity. I mean, it's really bad. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to get into a great, you know, thing about talk about the homeless issue here, but we have a really huge one. And um, I don't know that, that much is being done about it. And it's bad. It's terrible. I feel bad. You know, every, well, everything is just bad on every level. It's ter it's horrible as a society, as a culture, that we allow people to live this way and think that somehow, you know, a lot of these people can't take care of themselves. A lot of these people, there's mental problems, obviously drug addiction problems, but there's a lot of mental problems too. And people have health situations that they're just not, they're not able to take care of themselves. You know what I mean? They can't. It's They're not able to. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. It's not good. And I don't like going to that part of town, especially because it's it's just so bad. But that's where Sally Ann's is, so that's where I went today. Um, yeah, Monday night. Let's see. Trivia. We usually do trivia on Thursday night. Sometimes, we, last Monday, we went to a different bar. This company does trivia games all over the island, right? Um, the one we usually go to, Tropics Ale House in Waikiki, that's our regular one on Thursday nights, but once in a while they go to the members, uh, whoever from our group will go to another <clears throat> bar on another night where they have it also because you get bonus points. So you accumulate points through the season. And the highest, whatever, one or two teams goes on to the semifinals for the island. And uh, our team does pretty well. And you get actually, you don't get to keep your score from other bars when you go, but you get 100 bonus points added to your season total if you show up at another bar as a team and play. So they've done that before. We went, Monday night, we went to a place downtown that I've, that's kind of new to me. And, uh, we ended up in third place. It's a nice place, but I got food poisoning, and so did uh, somebody else that ate one of the same things that I did too. It's pork belly sliders. I love pork belly. But yeah, we both kind of got food poisoning from that. I'm not saying I wouldn't go back there. I just wouldn't get pork sliders. <laughs> um, but this week, it was fun. This week at, uh, unusually at Trivia, I actually uh, kind of, I mean, I just should own it, was kind of responsible for us ending up in third place, which we weren't close to third place. I ended up being in third place on the double or nothing at the end, the very last question, where you bid everything or nothing, and we... 
You don't usually do that unless you're pretty sure. Although, right, we are at a point, our team is at a point now uh, in the season where just factually, we're so far ahead of everyone in terms of point total for the season that we are going to the semifinals. Regardless of what happens the rest of the season, we could blow our points to zero, you know, in the upcoming games if we want to. So we, like this last week, we could risk it. We're like, all right, let's, you know, risk it. And the final question, so it's you double your score, you go to zero. And people do go to zero sometimes. We have in the past, too. It was a blank map of Africa with one country, the country below Egypt, colored in. And it was, what country is this? What's the name of this country? Um, and we were kind of, you know, arguing amongst ourselves over that one because, you know, quite a few of the people were like, that's Ethiopia, it's Ethiopia. And I'm, I'm thinking... No, I think it's Sudan. Ethiopia is more on the horn of Africa. And the country below Egypt, which is what this was, used to be larger, which I think is what was throwing some people off. It used to be larger, but a while back they split, and there's now a Sudan and South Sudan. So Sudan itself is smaller than what it used to be. So it's a little bit confusing. I think if you just look at the blank map and you don't really know what's going on, um, you are thinking Sudan's much larger, should be much larger. Um, anyway, but I was kind of sure it was Sudan and we were going back and forth and back and forth. And the last 20 seconds, <laughs> I did what we call in our team balls to the walls, which is just, you can, if you're kind of willing to take the risk and take the blame for it. And if you lose, everybody can be mad at you and they can be furious with you and upset and whatever. But if you're just going to kind of usurp everybody and submit an answer that you can't really challenge somebody on if you do balls to the walls. It's like, I did balls to the walls on Sudan in the last 20 seconds. I'm like, it's Sudan. <laughs> it in. I I'm really not 100% sure, but I'm like 99% sure, and I'm quite sure it's not Ethiopia. Um, and, you know, the, some of the other people on the team are like, I think you're wrong. I really think you're wrong. <laughs> and I was right. It was Sudan, and we were one of the few teams that got it, so we doubled our score, and we ended up in third place. So that was sort of a personal victory for me. I sort of pride myself on... Being pretty good at geography and knowing maps and stuff fairly well and i was pretty sure that was not ethiopia ethiopia is more on the horn and sudan i know is like below egypt so anyway that was like yay personal victory i think that's it i mean yeah i mean nothing really much else to say i don't think there's anything Work was nice this weekend. I've had some uh, past week. Oh, the weekend before last was so awful at work. It just was busy. The delivery order didn't come until two o'clock, which is closing. And I, that's horrible when it happens because you're like trying to leave. You're closing and a freaking delivery with all this stuff that has to be sorted and checked off. And then there's food that has to be frozen that has to be divided into containers and marked and stored away. It's just like, there's, they're not supposed to come at closing. They're supposed to come, you know, earlier in the day. So you can, although it's hard if there's only two people working, you know, it is hard also to like be putting away an order, trying to deal with that, dealing with customers uh, and customers orders and stuff. So it's challenging, but it's really annoying when the delivery comes at two o'clock. Anyway, this week, it was good and it wasn't out of control busy or anything so work was not crazy stressful this easter weekend okay that's it i guess that's my check-in uh i'm just i'm reclining in case you haven't figured it out i'm lying down in the bed i just came back from downtown and probably gonna take a little nap <laughs>